This is a Moxon vise, and it is one of my most favorite work holding devices. It consists of just two lead screws and two chops. The Moxon vise design has been around for at least a few hundred years, dating back to at least the one seen here in Joseph Moxon's The Art of Joinery from 1704. Although woodworkers have many other vice options today, the Moxon has regained popularity for two major reasons. First, it can accept wide casework that other vices can't due to its twin screw design, and it's easy to make with accessible and affordable hardware, unlike many face or tail vices. So far, I've cut my vise and workbench pieces to length, and my milling process looks a lot different than the one old Joe Moxon would have used in the 18th century. I start at the jointer, flattening a wide face of the board. Then I joint an adjacent narrow edge, giving me a square and flat reference. After jointing, I plane the opposing wide face to thickness, in my case, one and a half inches for the vise jaws and workbench legs, and one and a quarter inches for the workbench top. I can't imagine how long this would have taken with hand planes in the 18th century. While I ripped a parallel edge on the table saw, I also cut the wide boards down to squarish blocks to mitigate any cupping later on when the top was glued up. Narrow sticks tend to cup less than wide boards, so making a panel out of narrow boards results in a flatter panel over time. With that said, it's a trade-off, because you waste more material in the process of milling narrower boards. I did one final light jointing pass on each mating seam to get a perfect joint before gluing the workbench top up. Moderately light clamping pressure and even squeeze out makes for a tight lamination. The next morning, I realized what I'd done. I glued up a panel too wide to fit into my planer, so I had no other choice but to make like moxin and flatten the top by hand. Why do you care whether the top is really flat, you might ask? Joining this workbench together requires flat reference surfaces, whether it's the dados that attach the legs to the top or the dowels that attach the vise jaw to the mini workbench. Time taken here right now equals fewer issues later. With the top reasonably flat, I moved on to the jaws of the vise. I cut the outer jaw to the length of the top, but then kept the inner jaw longer. Nowadays, Moxon vices attach to a workbench with tabs that are either clamped or screwed down to the bench. The only critical dimension for the jaws is that the holes for the threaded rod are perfectly aligned, which helps prevent binding when you're using it. The hardware instructions came with some general locations for the holes, but I had to freestyle a bit because my boards were slightly narrower than the basis of the instructions. I marked all of my holes on the inner jaw, which included the main hardware holes, but also holes for the radius of the transition between the side and the foot of the jaw. Then I used double stick tape to attach the two jaws together and drilled a very small pilot hole through the inner jaw and into the outer jaw. This gave me a perfect registration point for the hardware holes on the outer jaw for the next step, which was actually to offset each hole a quarter inch in either direction. This only happens on the outer jaw and it allows the jaw to pivot one way or the other to accommodate for tapered work pieces. I drilled the outer jaw with a 3 quarter inch Forstner bit on my new marks to create an elongated hole. This left a little point in the center that I needed to clean up with a chisel. For the inner jaw, I actually needed to drill two different sized holes. To countersink the retaining nut into the jaw, I start with a 1 inch Forstner bit plunging just a little deeper than the depth of the nut. Then I follow up with a 3 quarter inch Forstner bit for the threaded rod, aligning it to the divot that the 1 inch Forstner left, and also the pilot hole that I had drilled before. A little more chisel work is necessary to turn that 1 inch hole into a hexagonal shaped hole for the nut. Off camera I drilled a 1 and a half inch hole at the transition between the side and the foot of the inner jaw, then used the table saw to split that corner of waste off. I definitely recommend using the drill method because it leaves a really nice radius, but I would recommend using a bandsaw or jigsaw instead of the table saw. The vise functions now, but it isn't pretty. Plus, it'll get chewed up like my last vise when I cut half-blind dovetails. To solve these problems, I marked a bevel line on the top of the outer jaw. It turned out that this measurement was about 60 degrees, so I tilted my blade to 60 degrees to cut a bevel that both looks good and is out of the way of the saw when cutting half-blinds. All right, so you could stop here and you'd have a basic Moxon vise. I'm going to create a dado on the bottom side of the workbench top to house the legs, which requires a pretty specific depth. 
To get that depth, I turn the top and the inner jaw upside down and measure the distance between the two. I added a half inch for the dado depth, then cut the legs to width. Next, I turn to the top. I wanted to make sure the legs wouldn't interfere with the hardware, so I marked the proper location before cutting the dados. You might notice that the dado is actually too tight and I did that intentionally. You see, I wanted to get the perfect thickness and I figured a light pass on the jointer on one face would be the way to go. And now it fits perfectly. Before attaching the legs to the workbench, I decided to give the bottoms of the legs some shaping. I think this looks way nicer than a blocky leg, but it's actually functional too. I don't want the center sections of the legs to ever touch the surface before the inner jaw or the far end of the legs. If this happens, the entire workbench will rock. So I marked a shallow curve and started cutting out the waist, first establishing a center line with a handsaw, then chopping out the bulk with a chisel. The waist pops out pretty easily, but I'm left with a really rough surface. This was a good excuse to get out my spoke shave to smooth it down. Right before glue up, I did a couple tasks that would be way more painful after. First, I sanded the underside of the top and both sides of the legs. I was careful not to sand where the legs entered the dado though, since I already had a really good fit. Then I drilled holes for the dowels that would be used to attach the inner jaw. My general philosophy was two dowels in the end of each leg, and then a dowel every three or so inches in the top. Probably way overkill, but whatever, it's stronger now I guess. With the holes drilled, it was time for the moment of truth. The dados made this glue up very simple, although I did make it difficult on myself by deciding in the middle of the glue up that I wanted blue tape at the seams to prevent issues with squeeze out. My advice is perhaps to make that decision before you spread glue. To get a good bond in the center of the leg, I used a call that spanned both legs. And before I let it sit overnight, I checked everything for square. The next day, I unclamped and got ready to drill the mating dowel holes on the inner jaw. The best solution I found was to use dowel centers. They're these little pins with points on the tip that leave a mark on the mating piece when it's pushed or tapped against the pin. And I've left a link in the description below to a set that I use. I drilled the first set of holes and because I only have four centers but I had 12 dowel holes, I had to repeat this process a couple of times. Each successive time, I used dowels in an existing set of holes to align the pieces. With all the dowel holes drilled, I glued the inner jaw to the workbench. Then came the long process of flattening the board by hand again. If you remembered, I'd flattened it before, but I was planing mostly cross grain at that time. This left some nasty tear out and blade tracks. This time I set my plane iron very shallow and did passes to first flatten the top out entirely, then to smooth it. I rounded over all the outer surfaces with a small round over bit. Then for all the mating edges, I broke them by hand with some 220 grit sandpaper. I met up again with my good friend the sander and spent some time getting the surface smooth and ready for finish. A quick spray coat of shellac first, then a couple coats of water-based polyurethane. I may end up adding dog holes into the top later, but for now I think this will do nicely. I'm really liking this gradient pattern and cannot wait to use it for my first set of dovetails. And speaking of dovetails, the Moxon Vice is so great for everything from layout, to sawing, to even chiseling on the workbench top. And here you can even see how the bevel on the outer jaw prevents from cutting into the vise as I saw at a very high angle. Thank you for watching and see you next time on the Bike City Woodworks channel.